Gluten tag. This grandma style starter pizza is so good it might get stolen. Good news, this recipe is so easy to make that you can just make another one. It's grandma style. Not because there are grandmas on your pizza. Grandma, because it's easy to make, very comfortable and reminds you of that awesome stuff your grandma used to cook for you. Grandma style stuff is the holy grail of food. It brings back all those amazing childhood memories. Be prepared for a crazy challenge and a super incredible surprise at the end. Something super crazy involving a creepy bunny. And when I mean crazy surprise, it's really something crazy. See for yourself. Normally making a sourdough pizza is really a big pain. It's very hard to control the timing. Your guests come or you're in a restaurant and then your dough is not ready. A disaster, your guests have to wait, nobody is happy. But with this method that I'll be showing you today, no more. This method is so simple and always allows you to make the perfect sourdough pizza exactly on point, exactly when you need it. I think this recipe is really a game changer. And of course, there is a full video with all the explanations, which I'll be linking right here. But no worries, I'm going to condense all the learnings now for this recipe in a much, much, much shorter and simpler explanation. If you're that person though that likes the full set of explanations, please do check out that video as well. And you will be surprised how simple this actually is. I really love this method. So for the recipe, I added 200 grams of bread flour per pizza pie. I'm gonna be making two, so that's 400 grams of bread flour. That's a flour that has a high protein content. Very, very, very important. Check that on your packaging. Then I'm adding four grams of salt per pizza pie eight grams in total, that's 2% calculated on the total flour. Those percentages are really, really helpful in case you just wanna scale up the recipe quantity. Bakers call this baker's math. And it's a really simple math. You just base all the ingredients based on the flour and then you use a percentage value. So simple to scale this up or down. And then I'm adding my liquid sourdough starter. You can be using any sourdough starter, it's going to work. Just make sure that you gave it a couple of feedings before to make sure you have a healthy balance of bacteria and yeast. Very important. I'm going for around 10% sourdough starter, so that's in total 40 grams or 20 grams per pizza pie. I personally just love using a liquid starter. It adds nice dairy and banana notes to the dough. It's really my favorite starter. And it's also so much more simple to maintain. Then I'm adding 280 grams of room temperature water. Because I'm using a liquid starter, I'm using a little bit less. I'm aiming for 70% final hydration. So if you're a regular pizza maker, this makes a more sticky dough, but nothing to worry, I get you covered. Okay, I'm just gonna be kneading this now. I'm gonna be using a stand mixer, but you could totally also just use your hands. Knead it for around five to 10 minutes. Make sure that everything is nicely homogenized so that you have good fermentation going on everywhere inside of your dough. And then comes the single trick that makes you nail the fermentation process. The fermentation just started because we now added the sourdough starter in this mix. So let me knead that and then show you the magic trick. I'm going to be using the stand mixer and knead until I see that the dough lets go of the bowl. Mixer activated. Now for the hack that I'm showing you to nail the fermentation, all you need to have is a small container like this. You could also be using a glass, a shot jar, something like that of this shape and you need a pen. And let me show you what we're gonna do. We extract a small piece of the dough and we put this into this container. We just let this rest and this is going to be our fermentation meter. We have to wait a little bit. If you're unpatient, you can also use a fork, not a spoon, like this and push it down a little bit. Five minutes later. And that's it. Now all we do is we mark this. And the moment this has roughly increased by 50% in size, so half of this, 
we are ready with the main fermentation. This makes it so simple. You will always nail the fermentation process. But to take it even further, I have one additional cool trick prepared for you. So let's round this dough up, wait until this increased by 50% in size, and then we'll be back. So let's round this up now. I'm using a dough scraper, but you could also definitely just be using your hands. Your, your hands. <laughs> Do you see what I did there? <laughs> Hans. Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> A nice smooth round dough. And this is gonna rest next to this main dough. I'll cover this because I don't want the dough to dry out. And then up comes the magic next trick. Just FYI, in case the temperature changes in your room during the day, this trick might not be working because this sample would heat up or cool down faster than your main dough. That's why we use room temperature water as well. But enough, see you in a bit. So our sample has roughly increased 50% in size. This means the first stage of the fermentation is done. And now comes the really cool trick that I wanna show you. First, we need to apply one stretch and fold to this dough. That's very important. With wetted hands, we are going to take this dough and then fold it over. We do this once from each side. And that's it, that's our dough after the stretch and folds. And now we are going to move this to the fridge. What you could do now, if you wanted to make the pizza right away, you would now be shaping the pizza balls. But by moving this to the fridge, we can leave this in the fridge for a week, for two weeks. And then three hours before we want to make the pizza, we take out the dough, we shape the pizza balls. This trick allows you to always nail exactly when you want to make the pizza. This is really a game changer because normally you never know exactly when the dough is done. You might have to wait and so on. Your guests are there. It's very, very stressful. But with this method, we made the dough now, it's good. And now it can be in the fridge for a week, two weeks. And then we are making the pizza. We just take it out three hours before. It's so easy, especially also if you have a restaurant or so. I think this is the best way to make sourdough pizza. So. This now goes into the fridge. And by the way, it's important that the fridge temperature, it should be below six degrees Celsius. Very, very important because else the fermentation just continues. So let me put this into the fridge and then see you, I think in four days, I'll leave it in there for four days because I don't have time to make pizza tomorrow or the day after. Please try this. I think this is really, really excellent. So see you in a few days and then we're gonna make an awesome sourdough pizza. Bye. Several days later. Gluten talk. And you wouldn't expect this, but this has been in the fridge for seven days. I'm acting like I'm an all busy person, but actually, I don't know. I just wasn't feeling like pizza. <laughs> and a little bit of water gathered here. I never had my dough in the fridge for this long. So I'm not going to sure if this will work out or not, but I think it's going to be a fun experiment. So let's take this from the fridge and then we will divide this into the pizza balls. It's now around three hours before I want to bake. And this is the magic, the single trick of this recipe. You put it in the fridge three hours before you want to make the pizza, you take it out of the fridge. And this really makes everything so much more simple. You'll see yourself, I hope. So I'm just carefully taking the dough from the container and I'm just testing. Yeah, gluten network is still there. This means our dough didn't over ferment. That's the worst, the worst case. Okay, that was a really bad German joke. The worst case. We Germans like sausages, you know? Wurst. Okay. Anyways, I now have my two pizza balls. I eyeball them and let's now shape them. I'm turning the dough around. I'm just taking the edges, I'm folding them in, and I'm repeating this from every side until it looks almost round. See that? So simple. And that's our pizza ball. Now I'm just dragging it over the surface and this only works because we didn't use any flour. So satisfying, smooth pizza ball. 
Pizza, not Pizza. Nice! Look at those two perfect pizza balls. They look so nice. I didn't expect the dough to be so good, but even seven days later, we can just use this dough. And cool thing is you could leave a little bit of dough in here and just make pizza again the next day whenever you want. This is what I love so much about this method. Now comes the tricky part. It's gonna dry out here, but for that I got a cool trick that I'll show you in a second. But first, I'm gonna be making one regular pizza and then one special pizza. So, be prepared for amazingness. But first, the trick to make sure they don't dry out. Now, imaginary, make a guess. What could this be? What could this magic trick be so that they don't dry out? Ta-da! A wet kitchen towel. And all we'll do is we will cover our pizza balls and this makes sure that they stay nice and hydrated. I learned this trick in Naples, Italy when I visited the pizzeria. Uh, I think this is just amazing. And now we just wait for three hours and then we start making two delicious pizza, one with a special surprise. I am so hungry and our pizza balls have been resting here so nicely. Look at how much they increased in size. They also became a little more puffy. Perfect. Now it's time to make the tomato sauce and to make an awesome tomato sauce, all you wanna do is get yourself some San Marzano tomatoes. Those tomatoes are so sweet and excellent. All you need is those, grind them a little bit and add a pinch of salt and you have the perfect tomato sauce. The hardest part of making the sauce is just squishing the tomatoes. Tomato sauce is done. Fail. <laughs> anyway, so grandma would probably be using a little bit of cheese, whatever grandma has left. I'm gonna be using some buffalo cream cheese, gorgonzola, some mozzarella, and a little bit of cheddar. So it's gonna be a cheese explosion pizza. You can use whatever toppings you like. I just like the play of the different strong cheeses. We're gonna be making everything in this beautiful cast iron pan. And trust me, this is so simple and this always makes you amazing pizza. I'll be showing you exactly how this method I think is the best and easiest option to make pizza at home without investing in a lot of tools. I'm starting by heating my stove and by preheating my oven to the max temperature. And let's start making the first pizza now. We are starting by adding some olive oil to our cast iron pan. This helps make it non-stick. Then we sprinkle some semolina flour. This really gives a coarse base, making sure that the pizza won't stick. This is exactly what we want. Getting it to stick, worst case. So that's the secret to making a pizza and a cast iron at home. Semolina flour and a little bit of oil and you'll have the perfect base. Just take a kitchen towel and spread this. Now the pan is ready, put this to the side, don't heat this yet. And now we're gonna start forming the pizza pie. Add a little bit of flour, flip it over once, some more flour, and now we just nicely press this down everywhere, leaving just a little bit of an edge. We're gonna make it as large as is required to fill our cast iron pan. Add a little bit more flour whenever you need And this is a good looking pizza pie. Rotating this one more time. And then I'm just, oops, using my hands to spread it even further. I like to use my knuckles to do this. And that's the base for our pizza. Now we take it and place it inside of our cast iron. We can just take it a little bit, spread it even further. Oh no, so we have a little bit of a hole situation there. <laughs> Nothing to worry really. That's going to fix itself. Now all we do is we add our tomato sauce, not too little. We want this to be nicely 
tomato -ishy. And then comes our cheese mixture. All right, that's our pizza. We're just gonna finish this off with a little bit of oregano here on top. Now it goes on the stove and that's the secret when using the cast iron, we'll just bake it on the stove and then move it to the oven. Use maximum temperature. And now we see that our pizza dough releases a lot of steam, then we need to take it off and we need to start rotating it a little bit. So it's always a little bit hard to say with the cast iron when exactly to rotate it. But sometimes when you see gas like this coming out, and when it starts to smell just a little bit burnt, then you want to rotate. This just makes sure that we have excellent cooking of the pizza dough from the bottom as well. And then next up, we're just going to finish it in the oven. But then I have one more surprise pizza because we still have this dough left. What am I going to do with it? Pizza has been rotated and now it's time to finish baking this inside of the oven. Bottom is cooked, now we need to cook the top part. If your oven has a broiler, make sure to activate it. See you. And voila, around two minutes later. Ooh, just look at all that cheese. <laughs> the dough nicely puffed, a little bit of charring. I think this makes the perfect pizza. So if you did everything right, we are now able to remove the pizza from the pan without it sticking. Success! And this is exactly what you want. You want to have that delicious charring from the bottom as well. It just adds so much more flavor. And the most important part of this whole video, how does this taste? Oh, I just love how much cheese is on there. Mmm, mmm. Oh, this is so good. This is the stuff. But this video is not yet over. So brace yourself for an additional awesomeness coming up right now. I'm first gonna finish this. Now, I'm not alone in this challenge. I'm part of a crazy pizza group. Mile Zero Kitchen and Kitchen and Craft have challenged me to try a grandma style sourdough version of this recipe. Now check out the goodies that they have done, check out the videos, and then in the end please let us know who do you think won the challenge. I'm going to be linking all the videos in the description as well. Let's see here. Let's see if I can do this with some finesse, huh? There we go. Yeah, pretty looking. Check this out. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> that looks pretty good. I'm gonna cut this into nine pieces. And that's kind of what I'm talking about in terms of thickness, just like that, all right? Nice, okay. Next pizza has been placed and now comes the magic trick. Drum roll. Are you ready for it? Ta-da! This creepy looking bunny is gonna make us an amazing pizza. This style of chocolate we Germans simply love. So let's make a sweet surprise pizza. Ta-da, that's the pizza. Plus we're adding some additional almonds just for the taste. And now same cooking method and let me show you the final result. <laughs> Look at what's happening without the tomato sauce. And are you ready to see this beautiful masterpiece? <laughs> Fail. Uh, lesson learned. I shouldn't have 
left it in the oven for so long. It turned out so terrible. Uh, this poor little bunny was sacrificed for nothing. Uh, <laughs> well, see, even I sometimes <laughs> forget about a pizza and this really was not a good idea. It looked so promising. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this fun challenge. It has been a big challenge. First pizza turned out nice, this one not so much. Would you still eat this pizza or would you throw it away? I would be curious to hear your thoughts on this. Definitely learned a few lessons here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, may the gluten be with you. <laughs> now something is a little bit odd about this video, right? Have you realized that I'm not wearing any glasses anymore? To figure out what exactly happened there, you want to be dropping by on our Discord server, an amazing community where so many bakers are. It's a great place to ask a lot of questions too. Oh wow, right? Look at this good pizza. Mm. <laughs> so you see, I fail a lot, but this is how you learn something new.